Good morning. My name is Rich Stockton, and every week we start our services with something called Living Our Values Every Day. It's a chance for people to learn about some of the social justice ministries and acti their activities that are happening around the congregation. And today I'd like to invite Lorleen DeVos to come up and talk about You, You, The Vote. Good morning. <laughs> Recently, a friend shared Clarissa Pinkola Seste's letter to a young activist during troubled times. This paragraph was particularly powerful for me. Ours is not the task of fixing the entire world all at once, but of stretching out to mend the part of the world that is within our reach. Any small, calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul to assist some portion of this poor, suffering world will help immensely. It's not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip toward the enduring good. What is needed for dramatic change is an accumulation of acts, adding, adding to, adding more, continuing. We know that it does not take everyone on Earth to bring justice and peace, but only a small, determined group who will not give up during the first, second, or hundredth challenge. As we resume writing postcards to voters in, in, of color in southern states, I've been reflecting on how much our work fits Estes' notion of any small thing that one soul can do to help another soul. I've come to see our postcard writing as spiritual work, a way that we live our principles and our actions, but also as a spiritual practice that can deepen our sense of interdependence. Postcarding voters is an expression of our fifth principle as we aspire to bring the democratic process to the larger society through our work, but it's also about valuing our siblings. The people that we write are often disenfranchised, burdened by a complex voting process, or at best, dismissed in political decision making. Decision making that profoundly affects their lives. They're not the wealthy nor the powerful. They're treated by this system as if their voices do not matter, and they may have come to believe that. When we send a postcard to them, we are implicitly saying, we see you, and we value you, and we want to hear your voice. We are acknowledged their inherent worth and dignity. And in keeping with our recently adopted eighth principle, we're doing the work of dismantling systemic white supremacy culture as we support those who are most impacted by this racism. During the UU, the vote work in 2020, Reverend Carolyn Paterno led a grounding that inspired me. We were phone banking, and she encouraged us to be mindful of the person we were calling. This practice deepened the meaning of the work for me. I saw it not only as political work, but work that expressed my spiritual values. Reverend Paterno called on us to tenderly hold our, in our loving hands each household where the phone would soon ring. As we write, let us hold the person to whom we are writing in our hearts. Knowing that like us, they want a secure, peaceful life where their wants and needs are freely expressed and heard. As we write, let's take a moment to envision their hands holding the cards that we have held. She and Reverend Paterno encouraged us to meet each hello with kindness and compassion. Let's send our messages with love and compassion to those receiving the cards and hope that seeing our handwriting, real handwriting, they know that we've cared enough to spend the time to reach out to them. As we write our cards, let's embrace the interconnectedness of our lives and theirs. 
and let us know that we're taking a step toward building the beloved community we dream of. Please contact UUTheVote at usnh.org to join the postcarding for justice effort. And join us in the spiritual practice of writing postcards as we build a com the beloved community one small card at a time. Thank you, Lorleen and Bill, and welcome all to the Unitarian Society of New Haven, and happy first day of spring. As I said before, I'm Rich Stockton, a member of the worship committee and your worship associate today. You can refer to me with the pronouns he and him. Our minister, Reverend Linda Susan Ulrich, is away today and will return next week. Participating in the service today will be Jesse Grice, our Director of Lifetime Religious Education, and our music directors, Jeff Dalma and Erica Schroth and Bill Braun. And several of our members will take part in the music and the readings. If you're joining us for the first time, we're so glad you chose to spend this time with us. We are a diverse, multi-generational faith community that inspires lives of compassion and generosity, nurtures spiritual growth, cultivates transformative connections, and creates a more just world. This is a congregation that believes black lives matter, that all people are inherently worthy. We humbly acknowledge our debt to the Quinnipiac and other indigenous people who were the caretakers of the waters and land where USNH now sits. In addition to our live stream version of the service, we're able to meet in person. But for everybody's safety, we must keep our high quality masks on when not at the podium. And the other request I have on behalf of your neighbor is to please silence your electronic devices. For newcomers in person, please stop by the welcome table after the service, or you can contact us by email at membership at usnh.org, or you can go to our website, usnh.org, to find out more about us. I do have a couple of announcements. Next Sunday, March 27th at 1130, you are invited to a Covenantal Relation Committee's in-person movie discussion in the social hall on the movie the Best of Enemies, a true story about a civil rights activist and a Ku Klux Klan leader. Join this discussion at USNH after watching the movie at home. There's more information about this in the newsletter and by email. And at one o'clock today, right here in the sanctuary, a presentation titled, It's Time to Pivot, Addressing Global Problems Through Local Solutions. 
will be held. It is co-sponsored by the Humanist Association, the Adult Religious Education Committee, and the Green Sanctuary and Environmental Justice Task Force. Local author and filmmaker Steve Hamm will be speaking. All are invited. So please stay or grab some lunch and come back. A remote option is available and the link is in the USNH newsletter. This morning's call to worship is from Dick Allen. Listening deeply, sometimes you can hear the sound of a hermit sighing as he climbs a mountain trail to reach a waterfall, or a Buddhist nun reciting prayers while moonlight falls through the window onto an old clay floor. And once in a while, you find a child rolling a hoop through the alleyways of Tokyo, laughing, or a farmer pausing in a rice field to watch geese fly, the thoughts on his lips he doesn't think to say. Come, let us listen deeply and worship together. We like this chalice in the spirit of our Earth's awakening. Around us, light is returning. It wakes us from our winter slumber and invites us to see what lies beyond. In Rumi's words, today, even every day, we wake up empty and frightened. But don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are hundreds of ways to kneel and kiss the ground. Our co covenant lies at the center of how Unitarian Universalists gather in community. We are united not by a particular set of beliefs, but by the promises we make about how we will be together, how we will treat each other, and how we will seek to mend relationships when we fall short of our aspirations. Each week, we recite together a brief version of our covenant. I encourage you to read the full covenant on our website. While the following words express our intentions in writing, our true covenant lives and breathes in our actions. Please join me now in reciting these words in your order of service. We covenant together to create and nurture a culture of respect and kindness and to engage in the spiritual and everyday practice of loving more generously. To this end, we will strive to be open, value differences, listen deeply, use kind language, speak our truths, work with conflict, seek humor and joy. Friends, I have some exciting news on this bright spring morning. Uh, after many months of telling you to refrain from singing while Erica and I or the choir sing our hymns this morning, we are very happy to invite every member of our masked and vaccinated congregation to sing along on our hymns. Yes. And to get back in the swing of things, we've chosen two rounds which both resonate with the themes of this morning's service. Alhamdulillah, uh, a Muslim expression similar to Alleluia. And first, uh, number 188 in your gray hymnal, Come, Come, Whoever You Are, a text by Rumi. And with apologies to Rumi, I think we're going to change one word uh, this morning. Uh, instead of come, we will say sing. Sing, sing, whoever you are. Sing, yet again, sing. Let's all stand. Can I have an e flat bell? Uh, so it'll be like this. Sing, sing, whoever you are. Wanderer, worshiper, lover of being ours is no care of and of despair. Sing yet again. Sing yet again. Yeah, one more time in unison, and we're saying sing instead of come. Ready? And sing, sing, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving. Ours is no care of and of despair. 
sing yet again sing you sound beautiful we'll do it one more time in unison and then we'll do it as a four-part canon starting here followed by this section followed by this section followed by this section I'll bring you in and we'll do it as a canon three times all right so you'll sing it four times all together here we go ready unison sing sing whoever you are wonder worshiper lover of leaving ours is no caravan of despair sing yet and sing 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 whoever you are sing sing whoever you are sing Come, come again, whoever you are, come here. Atheist, pagan, idol worshiper, whatever you are, come. Our home is the home of never losing hope. Even if you have broken your repentance and vows a hundred times, come, come again. Now that poem is inscribed on the wall of Jalaluddin Rumi's shrine in Konya, Turkey. Today's service is centered around Rumi's poetry. Rumi was born over 800 years ago in 1207 in Balkh, Persia, in what is today Afghanistan. His father, Bahauddin, was a famous religious teacher and mystic who was also a professor at the university in Balkh. When the Mongol War came to their hometown, kind of the same way the Russian War has come to so many Ukrainian towns, Rumi left as a refugee and arrived in his new home, Konya, in what is today Turkey. By the time he made it to Konya, his mother had died, and Rumi was married and had a baby son. Rumi got his early spiritual education from his father, Bahauddin, and from family friends. They were a community of Sufi mystics, but very much rooted in traditional Islam. Much of Rumi's early poetry was about Islamic faith and the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. At the age of 37, Rumi met the spiritual vagabond and holy man, Shams. It was his meeting with this dervish on the 15th of November, 1244, that completely changed his life. Prior to this encounter, Rumi had been a professor of religion and a highly attained mystic. After this, he largely abandoned his profession, becoming an inspired poet and a great lover of humanity. Now, those of you who lived through the late 60s probably know somebody who's followed a similar life path. Shams convinced Rumi that at certain moments it was possible to commune directly with God. Rather than seeing humanity as simply being interpreters and followers of the immutable set-in-stone word of God, Rumi now believed that anyone, in fact,
could experience the presence of the divine directly within themselves. This was a pretty revolutionary and somewhat controversial idea at the time. In fact, when talking about God in his poems, Rumi traded out words like Lord and Almighty for words like friend, and even often called God my beloved. Although there had been a substantial Islamic mystical tradition prior to Rumi, it is fair to say that his poetry transformed both thinking and ritual in this regard. Rumi changed the way Sufis prayed, the way they danced, and for centuries after his death, he changed the way many people even believed in God. Today, we celebrate Rumi, and I will offer you one of my own favorite poems. If you hold a piece of blue glass in front of your eyes, the whole world will look blue to you. The essence of all knowledge is to know the world, but also to know the blue glass. This is how you will know yourself in the world. You may know the principles of your religion very well. Now, look at the root of the principles within yourself. How are they functioning? Do you live by them? Now, children and youth, please rise, and let's go find out. <laughs> All children and youth, please repeat the class. I now invite you to join me in holding in our hearts the joy and sorrow of those in our community. <clears throat> Closing your eyes and going inward if you are comfortable doing so. Some of our joys shine more brightly as others reflect our delight. And some of our burdens are made lighter by as others help us carry them. We continue to hold the people of Ukraine in our hearts. May peace come soon for all the joys and sorrows, both large and small, both spoken and unspoken, we bear witness and we give thanks for this community of care. This meditation is from Thich Nhat Hanh. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Let's keep a moment of silence. Amen.
We are grateful for all the good things we have been given. We appreciate the uplifting energy of community. The spirit of generosity fills us and we want to give back also. There are so many things we can do together that we can't do alone. You may not be able to contribute in person, but you still, we still need your offering more than ever to support the ministries of this congregation. <clears throat> and while you listen to music, you can go to <clears throat> our website, usnh.org, online services, donation plate, or mail to our address, 700 Hartford Turnpike in Hamden, Connecticut, 06517. Or if you are here, you can place a donation in the plates that are in the back of the sanctuary. And do make your pledge for next year as soon as possible. Be as generous as you are able. Your contributions are gratefully received. Well, in place of the sermon we do most Sundays, today we offer a tapestry of works from the six, seven, oh, 13th century Sufi mystic and poet Jela Ludin Rumi. And Jesse has already given us a good background information on him. The English texts we're using are Coleman Barks, the interpretation of Rumi's work. And we will begin. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, I'm Kathy Haskins, and I'll be reading The Grasses. The same wind that uproots trees makes the grasses shine. The lordly wind loves the weakness and the loneliness of grasses. Never brag of being strong. The axe doesn't worry about how thick the branches are. It cuts them to pieces. 
but not the leaves. It leaves the leaves alone. A flame doesn't consider the size of the woodpile. A butcher doesn't run from a flock of sheep. What is form in the presence of reality? Very feeble. Reality keeps the sky turned over like a cup above us, revolving. Who turns the sky wheel? The universal intelligence. And the motion of the body comes from the spirit like a water wheel that's held in the stream. The inhaling, exhaling is from the spirit, now angry, now peaceful. Wind destroys and wind protects. There is no reality but God, says that completely surrendered sheik who is an ocean for all beings. The levels of creation are straws in that ocean. The movement of the straws comes from an agitation in the water. When the ocean wants the straws calm, it sends them close to shore. When it wants them back in the deep surge, it does with them as the wind does with the grasses. This never ends. Good morning. I'm Lorraine Dowdy, and this poem is called The Seed Market. Can you find another market like this where with your one rose can you buy hundreds of rose gardens? Where for one seed get a whole wilderness? for one weak breath, a divine wind. You've been fearful of being absorbed in the ground or drawn up by the air. Now, your water bead lets go and drops into the ocean where it came from. It no longer has the form it had, but it's still water. The essence is the same. This giving up is not a repenting. It's a deep honoring of yourself. When the ocean comes to you as a lover, marry at once, quickly. For God's sakes, don't postpone it. Existence has no better gift. No amount of searching will find this. A perfect falcon, for no reason, has landed on your shoulder and become yours.
Good morning. I'm Jackie Trimble Shapiro, reading The Servant Who Loves His Prayers. At dawn, a certain rich man wanted to go to the steam baths. He woke his servant, Sankor. Ho, oh, get moving. Get the basin and the towels and the clay for washing, and let's go to the baths. Sankor immediately collected what was needed, and they set out side by side along the road. As they passed the mosque, the call to prayer sounded. Sankor loved his five times prayer. Please, Master, rest on this bench for a while that I might recite Surah 98, which begins, You who treat your slave with kindness. The master sat on the bench outside while Sankor went in. When prayers were over and the priest and all the worshipers had left, still Sankor remained inside. The master waited and waited. Finally, he yelled into the mosque, Sankor, why don't you come out? I can't. This clever one won't let me. Have a little more patience. I hear you out there. Seven times the master waited and then shouted. Sankor's reply was always the same. Not yet, he won't let me come out yet. But there's no one in there but you. Everyone else has left. Who makes you sit so long? The one who keeps me in here is the one who keeps you out there. The same one who will not let you in will not let me out. The ocean will not allow its fish out of itself nor does it let land animals in where the subtle and delicate fish move. The land creatures lumber along on the ground. No cleverness can change this. There's only one opener for the lack of these matters. Forget your figuring. Forget yourself. Listen to your friend. When you become totally obedient to that one, you'll be free.
Good morning. I'm Barbara Doba Youngstrom, and I'm reading Rumi's poem, Story Water. A story is like water that you heat for your bath. It takes messages between the fire and your skin. It lets them meet, and it cleans you. Very few can sit down in the middle of the fire itself, like a salamander or Abraham. We need intermediaries. A feeling of fullness comes, but usually it takes some bread to bring it. Beauty surrounds us, but usually we need to be walking in a garden to know it. The body itself is a screen to shield and partially reveal to light that's blazing inside your presence. Water, stories, the body, all the things you do are mediums that hide and show what's hidden. Study them and enjoy this being washed with a secret we sometimes know and then not. Chickpea, chickpea to cook. A chickpea leaps almost over the rim of the pot where it is being boiled. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> the cook knocks him down with the ladle. Don't you try to jump out. You think I'm torturing you. I'm giving you flavor so you can mix with spices and rice and be the lovely vitality of a human being. Remember when you drank rain in the garden, that was for this. Grace first, then pleasure, then a boiling new life begins and the friend has something good to eat. Eventually, the chickpea will say to the cook, boil me some more. Hit me with a skimming spoon. I can't do this by myself. I'm like an elephant who dreams of gardens back in Hindustan and doesn't pay attention to his driver. You're my cook, my driver, my way into existence. I love your cooking. The cook says, I was once like you, fresh from the ground. I boiled in time and boiled in the body two fierce boilings. My animal soul grew powerful. I controlled it with practices and boiled some more and boiled once beyond that and became your teacher.
I'm John Watson. This is sublime generosity. I was dead, then alive, weeping, then laughing. The power of love came into me, and I became fierce like a lion, then tender like the evening star. He said, you're not mad enough. You don't belong in this house. I went wild and had to be tied up. He said, still not wild enough to stay with us. I broke through another layer into joyfulness. He said, it's not enough. I died. He said, you're a clever little man full of fantasy and doubting. I plucked out my feathers and became a fool. He said, now you're the candle for this assembly. But I'm no candle. Look, I'm scattered smoke. He said, you are the sheikh, the guide. But I'm not a teacher. I have no power. He said, you already have wings. I cannot give you wings. But I wanted his wings. I felt like some flightless chicken. Then new events said to me, don't move. A sublime generosity is coming toward you. An old love said, stay with me. I said, I will. You are the fountain of the sun's light. I am a willow shadow on the ground. You make my raggedness silky. The soul at dawn is like darkened water that slowly begins to say, thank you. Thank you. Then at sunset again, Venus gradually changes into the moon, and then the whole night sky. This comes of smiling back at your smile. The chess master says nothing other than moving the silent chess piece. That I am part of the ploys of this game makes me amazingly happy. Another round this morning. Let's all stand. Uh, if you'd like to read along, it's 180 in the gray hymnal, but you may not need the music. There's only one word, alhamdulillah, and it sounds like this. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. That's the first part. Sing it. Ready? And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And then the second section goes alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Let's sing it all together from beginning to end in unison. Ready and alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, Please join me in reciting the words in your order of service for extinguishing our chalice. We extinguish this flame 
but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. These words of benediction are by Pat Schneider. The self you leave behind is only a skin you have outgrown. Don't grieve for it. Look to the wet, raw, unfinished self, the one you are becoming. The world, too, sheds its skin. Politicians, cataclysms, ordinary days. It's easy to lose this tenderly unfolding moment. Look for it as if it were the first green blade after a long winter. Listen for it as if it were the first clear tone in a place where dawn is heralded by bells. And if all that fails, wash your own dishes, rinse them, stand in your kitchen at your sink, and let cold water run between your fingers. Feel it. May it be so. Thank you.